Okay, so in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how you can install Windows on your Raspberry Pi 4. And you might be like, why are you making this tutorial? You have already made one. Well, there's updates all the time to this. And I just want to show you guys the latest version. And this time, I'm going to be using build 0.2.7 called Project Neon. And you might have heard from another other YouTube channels that this build, there was no Ethernet. But as of now, there is Ethernet and it's fully functional. So I'm going to show you how you can get this set up and running on your Pi 4. So to do this, first of all, you have to go over to the WR website, go to Downloads, download the Windows and Raspberry Imager. 2.0 is the latest version. And you just save it to wherever. I'm going to save it to my desktop. It's a zip. And now we need the Windows image file to be able to flash it and to get this you have to go over to the windows on raspberry pi discord server so the invite is in the description you just hit that invite and you make an account and log in and when you log in you might be like why can't i see all the messages and that's because you have to go over to you need to go over to activation and you need to activate it with under me six once you activate that you'll have to wait about 10 minutes and after 10 minutes you will be able to see the rest of the server and to so now we, to get the windows file you go over to wr tool images and if you have a torrent client you can download the torrent if you don't just use the mega file open a new tab and you just hit download and you'll be able to download project.neon and one more thing that we need to do for build 0.2.7 is get a special ethernet drivers so to get this you go over to pin messages and Marcin has done great work and he has provided this for us so you're gonna go to this ethernet one you're gonna download the zip and save it to wherever you like and it's gonna say that but go over here and click keep so now we have it all downloaded so now we can go and we're going to have to extract the WR folder. So first of all, make a new folder, call it WR, and then go to this folder and extract or just open it up and extract it to that folder that you created. And after you've done that, open up that folder, click on WR two times to open it up and click yes now choose your language and choose your disk I'm gonna choose my 30 gigabyte SD card and you want Pi 4 just that doesn't matter click OK next and choose your Windows and ARM image click project.neon this is the older version but we want the newer version and click next and what we're, what this is important here you need to go use a package stored on your computer click that click right here click yes and find that folder that you saved driver 0.2.7 click open and now it's now click accept and next now the UEFI firmware just use the latest firmware available on the server and it downloads it for you and then go next all the settings are good here click next and click install and now you just have to be patient and wait for it to finish installing okay so after a little while I get the installation has completed so now I'm good I click finish take out my SD card from my computer plug it into my Pi and boot it up okay so on your first boot you're gonna get this Raspberry Pi logo hit escape on your first boot and we're gonna go we're going to disable the 3 gigabyte RAM limit, so we'll be able to use all 8 gigabytes of our RAM. So you're going to go over to Device Manager, enter. Um, you're going to go down to Raspberry Pi Configuration, enter. And then you're going to go to Advanced Configuration, limit RAM to 3 gigabytes, hit enter. Do go down to Disable. And now we'll be able to use all of our RAM, so click F10 to save, then hit Y. And now just hit Escape till you get back to the menu. And go down to continue and press enter to reset and now it's gonna do a reboot and it's gonna start doing the Windows setup so this Windows first boot can take a while because it's getting everything ready and then you're gonna have to set it up like a normal Windows computer 
So don't worry if it looks like it's just doing the same thing. It just does that and it takes a long time. It's just what it does. So after a while of waiting for it to go through the Windows setup, I'm in the, I mean the Windows first login part. Now I'm in the setup part. And so it wants you to type in your name and all of that stuff. So just do that. And as you might see, the cursor looks different than the normal Windows cursor. In Amir, the developer has done this. He, in my opinion, and it looks better than the normal one. And it's a cool, cool idea. So now I'll make your password and confirm it. And then you need to make some security questions. So Amir has also made this part shorter. Like usually the this is called the Ube and it takes a long time usually, but he's added changed some files and edited stuff to make this a shorter process where we don't have to go through all of this long process. So it just will hurry up. So after you set up it just goes through this just a moment part. And it always says something went wrong, don't matter doesn't matter, just click skip. And that's all of the setup. Now it's setting up Windows for you, and in a little bit, you'll be in the Windows desktop, ready to use it. Okay, so I am successfully into the desktop right now, and you see what the desktop looks like. This wallpaper looks really nice, the neon writing right here in this background. I really like it personally. And so, as you see, I have my Ethernet cable plugged into my Pi, and I have Ethernet, so these new drivers do work, and that's amazing. So, let's go over some features of this operating system to show you guys what it is. So, right here, it says what version of Windows it is, and all of that stuff. And then, if we see this app, this app is called Pymon, and you might have um, seen this app in the other version, and... So this app shows you information about your Pi. So mine is a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B. This is my processor. I do have 8 gigs of RAM. And it shows what UF, UEFI firmware I'm on, what Windows build, and my um, temperature of my CPU, and all of that stuff. So it's actually a really useful little app to have. And I'm glad it's included in this build. So then we have our Windows thing right here and it just comes straight up man this is super quick it's so snappy this is the best build I have seen so far and this is just amazing to see that Windows and Raspberry hack has come this far look at that I can just do that and then this is our file manager everything works great here too then if we open up our task manager Go over to performance and we can see our CPU and I do have 8 gigs of RAM. It is all enabled. My disk, my Ethernet, all of it is working. So another cool addition that you can add that Amir has been working really hard on is this WR control panel. And he's been he's been coding this and working really hard on this and this is the latest version so far he is working on another version well there will be like an app store where you can install apps so by the time you see this video that might be out I'm not sure but if it is just download that version but you can just click the download button from the discord server and right here it says it could harm your device that doesn't matter right here click keep and we'll open up another tab for you. Just click show more. Keep anyway. Because there's nothing wrong with it actually. So then we can just go over here. And open up our file manager. Go to downloads where you downloaded it. And click run. And the loading thing. Instead of like a circle. It makes your little cursor colorful like that. Which is a little cool addition. So it first takes a little bit to load up, but then it works good. So I'm just going to go ahead, pin it to the taskbar so I can always easily open it. So it shows my processes and what my frequency is. I have it overclocked, that's why it's like that. And then this is my memory, how much is in use and how much is available. This is my disk, how much is writing and how much there is. And then if we go over to overclocking, 
he's added this awesome part where now you can overclock from the WR control panel. You don't have to go and open your um, config.txt anymore. You can just, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to mount the boot partition. Then you just set these things to whatever you want. Click apply and then you'll do a reboot and you'll be overclocked. So that's really cool that you can do this from this app. And then there's fan control. You can control your fan from here. You can control your GPIO pins from here. And about, it shows the machine name. This is made by Amir Dehan. And what version it is. And from update, this update is, it's, you can, it's not updating the Windows or the control panel. It's updating your UEFI firmware. So I have the latest version now, 1.20. But if you wanted an older version for some reason, you could type that version in here and click install. And this would grab it from the internet and install it. But the latest version seems to work well for me, so I don't need to do that. And then we have settings. And there's a light version too, so this light version looks pretty sick in my opinion. I like this light version. It can hurt your eyes kind of, but not mine so much. And then we have a shutdown button that will shut down your system. So I'm not going to be doing that right now. So this is about it for the WR control panel, and you can just pin it to your taskbar right there, so you can always easily open it up. And by the way, this is just the button where you can um, turn off your system. So if I open up Edge and go to some, let's show you guys some web browsing and YouTube videos to show you how great it is. So if I just type in Amazon, like, <laughs> the web browsing on this WR is so amazing so surprising why is it like that so that's weird um, if I type raspberry pi then just click on raspberrypi.org look at this it loads straight up I can go over to downloads. Like this is so quick. This is the best web browsing you you could get on this system, definitely. I can just go down, do all of this stuff. Now let's test out YouTube and see how YouTube plays. Oops. It looks like my clock is behind, so I need to update that real fast. So this reminded me that YouTube to get YouTube working on WR you have to delete the um, audio driver so to do that you're gonna have to open up device manager so you're gonna just go to the search bar right here search for device manager click on that and you're gonna go down to sound video and game controllers the Raspberry Pi audio you're gonna right click uninstall device yes I want to uninstall it and it totally uninstalls it and then after you uninstall you're gonna need to do a quick reboot and then tr then you'll be able to watch YouTube so after that reboot let me just show you guys that the YouTube does work because as you see there's an X right here that's just one little problem the YouTube is a bit of a problem because you cannot have sound and watch YouTube at the same time but if you're just watching something without sound that's fine too let's just turn on this one and without the audio driver it plays but if you do have the audio driver it just does this loading circle and it won't play it doesn't it's kind of weird but this is a fix for it so you see it does play it's a bit choppy not crazy much but a bit it is yeah so that's YouTube on here and it just comes back like and you it all loads up pretty quickly and you can see the stuff
So, um, I'm going to give big a big thanks to Amir and Marcin and the other guys over on the Windows and Raspberry Pi Discord server for helping out with this and making it what it is. And just making it much more fun to use and more usable. So I hope this video was helpful for you guys. And if it was, please hit that like button. And don't forget to subscribe.